The movie begins with a scene showing our protagonist, Megan Quinn, finishing a phone call with a client. Her workmate Chloe arrives and tells Megan that their boss, Mr. St. Clair, wants to see her. Megan's boyfriend Philip shows up unannounced and tells her that they need to talk about where their relationship is headed. Megan says they can do that later since she has to meet her boss. They schedule a dinner date instead. When Megan goes to her boss, he points out her record of working at the client relations department for a long time, despite her goal of becoming an architect. Mr. St. Clair offers Megan an opportunity to be promoted to her ideal role. He tells her about a recent retail development project, put on hold because a certain 60-year-old woman refuses to sell her property. Her boss wants Megan to go to Sapphire Lake and use her people skills to change the woman's mind. Another reason why he chose Megan is that she grew up in Sapphire Lake, making her a good candidate for the task. He takes Megan to another room to show her a video of the project. While watching the video, Megan has a flashback of when she was young. In the flashback, we see her with her ex-boyfriend Joe. They share a romantic moment beside a tree that has sentimental value to them. After the video presentation, Megan tries to convince her boss that Sapphire Lake might not be the best place to build a commercial area. St. Clair cuts her off and points out that if she wants to be promoted to architect, then she should let go of any sentimental attachments to the place. Eventually, Megan agrees to do the task, despite being given only four days to complete it. Later that night, Megan goes on a dinner date with Philip, as promised. He whips out a magazine called Chicago Attorney. He shows Megan that he is number 7 in the top 10 list of lawyers. Megan congratulates him and expresses how proud she is of him. This is when he brings up the future of their relationship in the conversation. He is wondering why Megan hasn't invited him to meet her family, despite being in a relationship for 9 months. Megan blames work for keeping her occupied, but Philip thinks she doesn't like him enough to take things to the next level. Their conversation is interrupted by a call from a doctor. Megan finds out that her father fell off a ladder and is currently being treated in a hospital. Megan leaves the date early since she wants to visit her dad early in the morning before she goes to work. She promises to think about Philip's relationship concerns. The next day, Megan arrives at her hometown, Suttervale. While driving, she suddenly remembers when she got accepted to her dream college. In the flashback, we see her celebrating inside a cafe with friends and family, talking about fulfilling her dream of becoming an architect. Going back to the present, Megan accidentally hits a car in front of her because she's distracted. When she goes out to apologize to the driver, she discovers that he's her ex, Joe. He is just as surprised to see her, since it's been a long time. After Joe checks for any damages to his truck, he asks if Megan is fine. Still shocked, she struggles to find the words to respond. They make small talk, and Joe reveals that he returned to town to take over his family's farm. When Joe asks about Megan's life, she tries to play things up by mentioning that her life is amazing. However, she mentions that she's working as a supervisor, not an architect. Joe can't help but ask what happened to Megan's dream. Instead of answering, she leaves in a hurry, stating that she needs to see her father at the hospital. In the next scene, Megan meets her father at the hospital. She also meets an old friend, a nurse named Violet. They agree to meet at their favorite cafe some time later. After that, Megan talks to the doctor in charge of caring for her father. The doctor agrees to let Megan's father be discharged, under the condition that he lets his foot heal before resuming work. Megan promises to keep an eye on him. When the doctor leaves, Megan's father discusses his plans to return to the cafe. She reminds him about the doctor's advice and insists that he rest. He responds by pointing out that the cafe needs helpers. Then he suggests that Megan should go there in his stead. Despite being busy, Megan agrees to help, as long as her father takes the time to rest. During the conversation, Megan receives a call from her boss. He asks her if she's already talking to Mrs. Friggins, the woman they want to buy a property from. Megan reassures him that she's on her way there. Before hanging up, he reminds her how important the task is. In the next scene, Megan arrives at Mrs. Figgins's property. The sweet middle-aged lady remembers who she is. At the beginning of their conversation, Megan tells Mrs. Figgins that she's there to say hi. The lady puts her guard down and makes small talk with Megan. She even allows her to address her by her first name, Francis. Unfortunately, Francis's mood changes when Megan reveals that she works for Mr. St. Clair. Francis states she's not interested in selling her land to developers who will build shopping malls on her property. She reveals that despite wanting to sell her property, she doesn't want to sell to the company that Megan works for. She believes that the development plan presented to her will ruin the place's natural beauty. By the end of the conversation, Mrs. Figgins expresses her disappointment towards Megan. She thinks that Megan is no longer the girl she knew, the girl who would do great things. Later that day, Megan calls Chloe and talks about the disastrous encounter with Mrs. Figgins. She also talks about bumping into her ex. During the conversation, we find out that Megan and Joe dated until she went to college. A week into college, 
Joe sent Megan a letter to break up with her. Megan also reveals that Joe is a widower and a single dad. Megan's father gets out of the hospital and she drives him home. She also prepares a healthy meal for him, prompting her father to tell her that he doesn't need to be taken care of. Then Megan gets a call from her pushy boss. He asks about the outcome of the meeting with Mrs. Figgins. Megan lies, telling her boss that the meeting went well. Her boss reminds her to give updates as soon as the documents are signed. After the call, Megan tells her father that she needs to go out for a while. He guesses that she is heading to Mrs. Figgins again. When asked why he knows about that, he just points out that word travels fast in a small town. He also asks Megan to stop by the cafe, to make sure it's running smoothly. When Megan heads to her car, she bumps into Joe and his daughter Lily. The little girl invites her to go ride bikes with her and Joe. Megan declines the offer, since she needs to go to Rosie's cafe. Lily then asks her father if they can go there too. Joe promises Lily they'll head there in a bit, and that's when they part ways with Megan. Megan arrives at the cafe and meets her friend, Dottie. She informs her that she's just there to make sure things are alright, and will leave for a meeting soon. Unfortunately, Dottie requests that Megan help her by being a waitress temporarily. Megan tries to reason her way out of the request, but Dottie points out that Megan's father might come there to do it himself. Since she doesn't want her father to exert himself, she has no choice but to help at the cafe, and skip the meeting. A few minutes later, we see Megan busy while serving the customers. Lily and Joe walk in and see what she's doing. After greeting them, Megan asks Lily to help her with taking orders. For some reason, Joe doesn't protest. Perhaps he wants his daughter to learn some work skills at a young age. Later, Dottie sees Joe staring at Megan from time to time. She sits down in front of him and, after a few seconds of silence, talks to him about the past. She reminds him that he broke Megan's heart in the past. Dottie leaves without elaborating further. Joe continues staring at Megan, perhaps thinking about rekindling an old flame. In the next scene, Violet sees Megan and Joe sitting inside the cafe, so she joins them. Lily starts drawing something, but she struggles with drawing a nose. Megan shows the little girl how to do it. After that, Megan receives a delivery of flowers from Philip. When Megan mentions her boyfriend, Violet asks her about him. Joe, already knowing about Philip, tells Violet some information about the guy, particularly about him being a lawyer. Violet demands more information, so Megan tries to describe her boyfriend. However, all she can say are vague descriptions, indicating that she might not know her boyfriend that well. Joe is amused while listening to Megan, because he can sense she's not enamored with Philip. The conversation comes to a halt when an employee hands Megan an extensive shopping list for Megan to take care of. Before she can protest, Dottie approaches Megan and shows her the dishwasher that just broke down. Megan loses her patience and loudly declares that she has another job to do. Hence, she has no time to handle every problem in the cafe. After a brief pause, Megan changes her mind, and decides to help with the problems. Joe also volunteers to help and fix the dishwasher. When Joe finishes fixing the dishwasher, Megan meets him outside the shop. She asks him for advice regarding her task of convincing someone to sell their property. Megan doesn't mention that it's Mrs. Figgins that she's talking about. Joe admits that such a dilemma isn't in his area of expertise, and gives no advice. After discussing a few more things, Lily arrives and interrupts the conversation. The little girl asks Megan if she wants to join her at the nearby festival to have some fun. Megan politely declines again, since she still has important work to do. After saying goodbye to Joe and Lily, Megan calls Mrs. Figgins, offering to bring her some food. Unfortunately, Frances knows what Megan is really up to, so she hangs up abruptly. Things are not looking so good for Megan's job assignment. Back at Megan's home, she serves her father another plate of vegetables. Philip tries to call her, but she doesn't pick up the phone. When her father asks Megan if she doesn't plan to go out, she tells him that she's had a bad day, and plans to rest. The father points out that she should consider joining Joe at the festival, given that he's very close to Mrs. Figgins. He suggests that Joe could help Megan convince Frances to sell her property. The next scene takes place at the Apple Festival in town. We see Joe fixing his daughter's jacket. Megan arrives and joins them at a festival attraction called Hay Ride. The three of them, along with other people, sit on a pile of hay on a cart pulled by a tractor. After the ride, Lily leaves Joe and Megan to go to another attraction with a friend. Megan finally gets the chance to ask Joe to visit Mrs. Figgins with her. At first, she makes it sound like a simple, innocent visit. However, Joe already knows that Megan has been to Mrs. Figgins' home. She comes clean, and tells him the real reason why she wants his help. Joe doesn't like the idea of coercing a lady out of her home. Megan goes into more detail as to why her goal will lead to positive outcomes. Before Joe can give an answer, Lily approaches him and shows him a flyer about an upcoming apple pie competition. She wants to join, and pleads that Joe help her make the apple pie that her mom usually makes. Lily insists that they should make something. Megan volunteers to help them, so Joe finally agrees and promises Lily that they'll join. He also tells Megan that he'll do his best to help with convincing Mrs. Figgins. The next morning, Megan goes to Joe's home to pick him up. She thanks him for joining her. Joe reminds her that he's just there to accompany her, and not be a part of any business deal. Megan goes on a detour to see her old favorite spot. Joe knows the place very well. 
He remembers the time when he tried to confess to Megan by hiding a letter inside the hole in the nearby tree. Unfortunately, before Megan could find it, she received a call from her father asking her to come back to the cafe. Back to the present, Megan checks the hole to see if anything is in there. She jokingly pretends to pull out something to amuse Joe. Megan then mentions that she kept Joe's letter throughout the years to remind her of what she had and what she lost. She then asks Joe why he broke up with her. Joe tries to dismiss the question by stating that it happened a long time ago, but Megan asks one more time if he has no plans on revealing the reason, even now. Just as the conversation is getting tense, Frances sees them and invites Joe for lunch. She also invites Megan, but only refers to her as Joe's friend. During lunch, Frances teases Megan, joking about waiting until lunch is over before she starts stealing her property. At one point, Frances talks about how Megan drew in the past. Megan admits that she no longer has time to do that. Frances thinks it's a shame, given that Megan always wanted to be an architect. Joe takes a call in the middle of lunch, leaving Megan and Frances to have a sincere talk. Megan immediately asks Frances what she can do to change her mind. Frances explains that she dislikes the building plan presented to her. She mentions that it's obvious the designer has never seen how beautiful the lake is and how serene the environment is. She doesn't want it to be turned into a commercial district devoid of natural beauty. After finishing the call, Joe explains that he needs to head out and thanks Frances for the lunch. Megan does the same. She also asks Frances if she can still visit some other time. Frances allows Megan to visit again, but she reminds her that she still won't sell her property to her company, no matter what. In the next scene, Megan is back at the cafe as a waitress. She sits down with Violet and talks about certain memories of working in the same place when she was just a child. She talks about how her mother was able to achieve her dream, unlike her, who has yet to become an architect. Violet comforts Megan by pointing out that dreams are indeed hard to achieve, and that's part of what makes them worth pursuing. All of a sudden, Megan receives a call from Joe. He tells her that a goat ate the pie that he and her daughter made. He has no time to make another one, since he has to deliver hay that night, so he is asking for Megan's help. Megan tells Joe to bring Lily and the ingredients to the cafe, so she can help make it while he does his job. Later, Joe drops Lily off at the cafe. He thanks Megan for her help, before heading out to do what he has to do. A moment later, we see Megan showing Lily how to make an apple cake. This is a recipe that Megan's mother taught her. During the process, Lily can't help but express how happy she is that Megan helped her out. Fast forward to later that evening, Megan and Joe are sitting outside the cafe. He tells her that the apple cake was quickly consumed during the competition. During the conversation, Megan notices that Joe seems to be bothered by something. He confesses that he appreciates how his daughter and Megan are bonding. However, at the same time, he knows that Megan won't be in town for long, which means Lily will be sad once Megan leaves. Megan promises to keep in touch, but Joe suggests that might not be the best course of action. The conversation shifts when Joe compliments Megan, telling her how she is so much like her mother, who was an amazing woman. After a few seconds of silence, Joe suddenly asks Megan if she is serious about her relationship with Philip. She responds by describing the things that she likes about her boyfriend. Joe notices that Megan is avoiding the question, instead of answering him directly. Eventually, Megan points out that it's getting late, so Joe gets up and leaves, but not before thanking Megan one last time for her help. Seconds later, Megan's phone rings, and she sees Philip is calling. Not wanting to deal with him, she decides to reject the call. The next morning, we see Megan, Lily, and Joe at the Apple Festival Fair. The host of the fair announces the People's Choice Award winner for Best Dessert. It's no surprise that Lily wins the competition. The little girl thanks Megan again for her help and hurries off to tell other people about her victory. In the next scene, we see Mr. St. Clair calling Megan. He says that he's supposed to be playing golf since it's Sunday, but he can't relax given that he hasn't received any updates from Megan. Megan admits that Frances is being a little difficult to convince. Her boss then reminds her once more that she needs to do her job properly or she'll be looking for a new one. After the call ends, Megan's father arrives at the cafe. She worries that he might overexert himself, but he reassures her that he won't do any exhausting work. Megan hurries out of the cafe, telling her father that she has a meeting to attend. In the next scene, we see Megan picking apples with Joe and Lily. They have a brief conversation about what Megan needs to get done in the afternoon before she leaves town. She tells him about needing to convince Frances, or else she risks losing her job. At one point in the conversation, Megan admits that she is no longer sure if what she's doing is right. She feels guilty, thinking that she's doing something wrong to a woman who has been a good friend since she was young. Joe suggests that perhaps there is some other approach that Megan could take. He thinks there might be a third option, aside from losing her job or doing Frances dirty. Joe is not sure what exactly that is, but he thinks that such a solution will pop up eventually. After Megan leaves, Lily talks to her father. She can sense that Joe will miss Megan, but he has not told her about his feelings. The little girl tells his father that he should be honest and tell Megan what he really feels before it's too late. 
Joe can't help but smile after hearing Lily's advice. Minutes later, we see Frances and Megan on a walk along her property. The older woman starts talking about some fond memories and how beautiful the lake is. Out of the blue, their conversation shifts to Joe and the letter he gave to Megan when they broke up. Francis tells Megan the real reason behind Joe's decision. He wanted to give Megan her freedom. He thought that breaking up would allow Megan to focus on achieving her dream. After the walk with Francis, Megan asks again if there is anything she can do to change Francis's mind about the property acquisition. Francis tells her that if she can show her a new development plan that respects the natural surroundings, then she might change her mind. Megan thinks that such a thing isn't possible, since the plan has been set for months. It's clear that there is no other way to sway Francis. Megan receives a call from Dottie telling her to come to the cafe, since the dishwasher isn't working properly again. When Megan arrives at the cafe, Joe is there waiting for her, wearing a slick suit. He walks slowly towards her, giving a speech about how long they've known each other. He confesses his feelings, and attempts to ask her to be his girlfriend again. The confession comes to a screeching halt when Philip enters the cafe and kisses Megan. He fails to pay attention to what's happening in the room. Philip gets down on his knees and proposes to Megan, shocking everyone around them, especially Joe. Now knowing what to do, Joe congratulates Megan and quickly leaves the cafe. Megan doesn't give Philip an answer, instead she leaves the cafe to follow Joe. This leaves Philip confused. Outside the cafe, Megan confronts Joe, reminding him that he broke up with her in the first place. He responds by stating his reason for breaking up. However, Megan argues that he didn't need to make that decision, and that they could have discussed it and worked things out. Joe's resolve goes out the window as he tells Megan that he should go back to Philip and live her life in Chicago. He regrets his confession, stating that he didn't know what came over him. After Joe leaves, Megan talks to Philip and breaks up with him. She goes back inside the cafe and tells her dad what happened. She wants to go home to rest. Before she leaves, her dad shows her drawings that she made in the past. Suddenly, Megan is struck with a brilliant idea that will help save her job. At her home, we see Megan bring out her old drawing tools. She spends the remaining hours of the day sketching a new plan for the company. She eventually falls asleep while sketching at 2 in the morning. The next day, Megan is woken up by a call from Chloe, informing her that it's already Monday. Megan checks the clock and realizes that she has only an hour left to do her job, and that her boss is heading to Cedarvale. Megan rushes out of her home and drives to Francis's place. Mr. St. Clair is already there, and he almost convinces Francis to sign the papers. When Megan arrives, she tells Francis not to sign the papers yet. Mr. St. Clair scolds Megan for interrupting the moment, especially since the papers are almost signed. Frances chimes in and tells the businessman that she wants to hear Megan's proposal. Megan presents alternative plans that take into consideration preserving the local plant life. She points out that there is no need to remove trees. Commercial buildings can all be placed without the need for environmental destruction. Frances likes Megan's plans and declares that she is willing to sell her property if the company implements Megan's plans. After a brief pause, Mr. St. Clair tells Megan to forward her designs to the company so that they can update the plans. The businessman leaves, and Francis gives Megan a warm hug to celebrate their agreement. In the next scene, we see Megan go back to the Apple Festival Fair. She talks to her father and tells him about the good news. Megan is assigned to lead the development project at Cedarvale, which means she'll move back there for the foreseeable future. Her dad expresses how proud he is of her. Next, we see Megan going to her favorite place. She leaves a letter for Joe inside the hole in the tree there. The letter tells Joe about Megan's breakup with Philip. It also contains a confession about how her feelings for him never went away. Later that night, Joe approaches Megan, telling her that he found her note. He gives her a promise ring, one that he has kept for over 12 years. When Megan asks what that promise is, instead of answering, Joe kisses her, and the two rekindle a romantic relationship. Lily arrives and gives them both a hug, making them look like a happy family. 